Hi, I'm Mark McKillier with LiveAnabolic.com. And if you're over 50, like me, you need to watch this video because I'm gonna give you three great exercises that are gonna help you get rid of that stubborn belly fat. And also, stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you another tip that's gonna actually help you supercharge this process. And guys, if you don't follow that tip at the end of this video, you're gonna be incredibly frustrated because nothing you do, no matter how hard you work out, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna lose that belly fat. All right, so let's start off with tip number one. It's simple, guys. It's called sprinting. Now, I don't want you all to go out onto a track and just sprint as hard as you can in a straight line. You're gonna pull a muscle, a hamstring. Let me tell you, I would. So. These are three exercises that you can do in the comfort of your own home, no special equipment. And when I talk about sprinting, I'm talking about something called anabolic sprinting, okay? Sometimes I refer to it as anabolic cardio. Sometimes uh, you'll hear me talk about something called HIT, which is high intensity interval training, very similar concept. So guys, there are tons of studies out there that talk about how great sprinting is for our hormone system. That's the key, guys. It really does supercharge our hormones and it increases our testosterone production. So guess what that does? That literally makes your body more efficient at using fat for energy and having more testosterone literally makes it easier to build muscle, okay? So another thing is that sprinting also creates something called EPOC. Now that's E-P-O-C and that stands for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. So why do we care about that? Well, it creates something called an afterburn effect. Basically what it does is after we stop our sprinting exercises, our high intensity exercises, your body actually maintains a higher than normal metabolism for hours and hours and hours after the workout's already done. So if you're doing traditional workouts, traditional steady state cardio, you're not gonna get that epoch or that afterburn effect. But sprinting, anabolic cardio, actually creates that. And so guys, it means that you're gonna be burning more calories throughout the day while you're just going about your normal business, whether you're sitting in front of the computer or driving a car or watching TV, because you got that excess post shot post-exercise oxygen consumption going on. Okay, so exercise number one, sprinting. Guys, it's a little different. I don't want you jogging in place like this, okay? And I don't want you doing high knees like this. I want you to be actually doing full on, 100% sprinting as hard as you can, but only do it for 20 or 30 seconds. So real short time sprint, sprint as hard as you can, stop, catch your breath, do it over for several cycles. All right, I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can, guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, this is what I'm talking about when I say all out 100% sprinting in place. And I'm talking about knees high, as fast as you can go, pumping those arms, okay? I cannot go any faster than this, okay? 100%, 20 to 30 seconds. Give yourself about a minute or two break. Do it all over again. Woo! Three more times. I want four cycles. All right, let's move on to exercise number two, and that is mountain climbers. Now, mountain climbers are absolutely fantastic. You don't need any room to do them. You just do them in your den. And then in addition to really getting your heart rate up, like the sprinting in place does, Mountain climbers also engage our core and our abs, and it strengthens our entire midsection. So, not only do we get the stronger, better, tighter looking abs, but mountain climbers also trigger that same epoch effect or afterburn effect. So, it's going to raise our metabolism for hours and hours and hours after we've already finished doing the exercise. So, guys, another study done by the Mayo Clinic says the exact same thing that I've been talking about. It says that for elderly people and beginners, doing this kind of 
high intensity interval training is a fantastic way to build muscle, burn fat, and improve your cardiovascular system. So follow along as I get down on the ground, do some mountain climbers for you. All right, guys, follow along. See if you can copy the form that I'm doing on these mountain climbers. And I'm gonna show you two different ways to do them. So for some of you beginners, you could try the easy way. If you're in better shape or if you just happen to be really good to stuff, you can do the more difficult method. All right, so here we go. We're gonna get down like we're doing a push-up, okay? And all I'm gonna do is bring one leg, knee up, and I'm not gonna to touch the ground with my toe. See how my toe's just off the ground? Come back, same thing on the other side. My toe doesn't touch, but my knee comes. And you're just gonna do it real fast. So we're just gonna be bouncing back and forth. So you gotta kinda of pop up on your feet and you're bouncing. So I'm bringing my knees up, but my feet weren't touching the ground. All right, let's say that's too hard for you. Let me show you technique number two. So this is what you do. You're in like a push-up position here and you're gonna hop and bring the left foot up and my foot is on the ground right now, okay? So I can hang like this for a while. And then I'm just gonna bounce and hop to the other side. So my foot's on the ground and I can just bounce back and forth doing mountain climbers with my feet on the ground. So two different ways to do it, guys. Pick the way that works best for you, okay? But once you get into better shape, I want you to try to do it the way I showed you the first time, where your feet don't actually touch the ground as you bring your knee up. All right, so just like the sprinting in place, same thing here, guys. This is basically doing mountain climbers in place, 20 seconds, as fast as you can go, all right? I don't have a stopwatch here, so I'm just gonna guesstimate. All right, what do you think, guys? Can I do it? Here we go. works guys trust me how long was that 20 30 seconds anyway I can feel the epoch kicking in now give yourself a couple minutes rest catch your breath watch you do it again three more times but we ain't finished I've got to show you exercise number three all right guys the third and final exercise for today's video are called bicycle cross crunches now this is probably one of my favorite, you know, go-to exercises for our abs and our core. And I really like it because it really does work all the muscles in our core. And not only that, at least for me, it's really easy on my back. It doesn't put any strain on my back. It doesn't put any strain on my neck. So guys, I love this exercise. And another thing is it just burns a lot more calories than doing one of these static core exercises like planks. And so you get that epoch effect, plus you're burning more calories. Great all around exercise, guys. I'll follow along. I'm gonna get down the floor and show you exactly how to do this. All right, guys, bicycle cross crunches. This is the correct form. Just follow along. It's really pretty straightforward. It may feel awkward at first if you've never done this, but I promise after you've done it a few times, it's easy. All right, all right, guys. Now remember, I'm not grasping my fingers behind my head here. I'm just putting my fingers on the side of my head and I'm not trying to pull my head up too hard. I'm not really cranking on the neck, okay? So my fingers are just lightly touching the side of my head here, okay? I'm gonna keep my knees up in the air the whole time and I'm just gonna side to side, bring my knee back and my elbow from the opposite side and try to touch, okay? So bicycle cross crunches. And guys, you can do them fast like this if you want for 20 to 30 seconds, or you can slow it down. Either way is fantastic. You get a great burn in your abs, your entire core. Man, I'm feeling it. And then you can speed it up. All right, 
bicycle cross crunches. Last exercise, give yourself a minute or two rest to catch your breath and let your abs just kind of recuperate and then do it all over again. All right, I'm glad that you stuck around for this final tip because this really is critical, guys. If you don't follow what I'm about to tell you, all those other three exercises are not gonna solve your problem of that ugly belly fat. The tip is you have to eat at a caloric deficit. And I don't mean just occasionally. You need to eat at a caloric deficit on a day in and day out basis. Guys, you can have a cheat day. If you mess up on a day or two, don't give up. Get back on your routine. So what is a caloric deficit? Guys, you have to make sure you're burning more calories every day than you're consuming. It's as simple as that. The problem is calculating on those two numbers. Burn, the amount of calories you burn is pretty straightforward. Take your body weight in pounds, multiply it by 15, and that is roughly what you burn on an average day. You guys, if you want to get more accurate, you can go out and buy one of those watches, these Fit watches that track your heart rate throughout the day and the number of steps you take. Those watches are giving you a more accurate representation of how many calories you burn every day. Now, the intake side, how many calories do we take in when we eat? This is how you do it. You have to keep a diary for two days. That's it. I know it's a pain in the butt, but once you do it, you'll understand and you'll know what your average daily intake is. So write down everything you eat for two days and pick two average days, okay? And I mean write down everything. And then at the end of those two days, get on your computer. There's a bunch of simple apps on your computer and look up how many calories are in all that food that you ate. Then you can calculate what your average daily intake is. And you want the burn rate to be about 500 calories higher than your intake rate. Why? Because 500 calories a day is a real easy to get rid of, okay? That's not many calories. You can easily cut 500 calories out of your diet on an average day and not feel hungry, okay? And then secondly, 500 calories a day times seven days a week, 3,500 calories a week. So why is that cool? Guess what? 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat. So guys, if you can burn one pound of fat a week, it doesn't sound like much, but that is fantastic. It's a great way to accomplish your goal and then keep that fat off. So guys, thanks for sticking around. I really hope you appreciated the video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, post some comments below, like it, share it with your buddies. And remember, always stick with it and don't give up on yourself.